So this is the OnePlus Nord 2, OnePlus latest and the first OnePlus phone with a MediaTek chip, 65 watt wire charging and of course, of course, the new Oxygen OS 11. Now you might have seen all the unboxing first impressions and I'm not going to waste much time on that. Rather, the question that has to be asked is, how similar is Oxygen OS now to Color OS? Or rather, how colored is Oxygen OS? Well, this is TechWiser, you are already watching Prateek and by the end of this video, you'll have a clarity on whether you should consider the OnePlus Nord 2. Let's go. It's the same box as every OnePlus Nord phone. Let's keep the phone to the side. You get a case, a lot of paperwork, not stickers. An interesting, interesting thing, I've never seen people talk about the Red Cable Club membership. Let's scan to see what this is. So this is OnePlus membership program and if you scan this card, you get a surprise scratch card. Nice, I get 100 rupees and 5GB cloud storage for one year. Cool, not bad. Well, just a wise tip over here, if you have an Amazon Prime subscription, you can instead switch to Red Cable Pro. You have to pay 2000 per year, but you get Amazon Prime and 1TB OnePlus cloud storage. Cheaper than Google Drive and Amazon Prime combined. Just for OnePlus users only. Anyways, you get a 65 watt fast charger and USB-A to Type-C cable. Now let's get to the phone. You have a Type-C port at the bottom, SIM card tray, mic, and a single speaker at the bottom, again sad, but no headphone jack. You have a volume button on the left, power button and alert slider on the right. On the top, you get a noise cancellation mic and also there's a stereo speaker right over here. The SIM card tray can hold two SIM cards and no micro SD card expansion. Now we had a lot of build issues with the Nord CE if you remember, the frame started popping out after some time. Hear it closely. You can hear the sound. Even this has a plastic frame. We'll see how it goes. Now this phone seems to be built well. It feels compact but still a bit heavy. Of course due to the glass bag and a 4500 mAh battery which is divided into two cells. Now it provides improved charging time and speed but it does take some space. The Nord 2 weighs it at around 190 grams. By the way you get Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on both the front and the back. Moving on, you get a 90Hz Full HD AMOLED display here, again in case you don't know. There's not much difference between a 90Hz and 120Hz display unless you are gaming. Surprisingly, it can go bright up to 600 nits in auto brightness. But it is not HDR10 certified on Netflix. On the other hand, the cheaper Nord C was HDR10 certified. Weird. Again, one more small thing I noticed, it is L1 certified, but I couldn't make it play 1080p videos on Amazon Prime. So here at the top, you have the Nord 2 and at the bottom, you have the Nord CE. So as you can see, the Nord CE can play Prime video easily at 1080p and it's on the same Wi-Fi network. All this Netflix and Prime video issues should be fixed with an update, hopefully. Now the Nord 2 comes with MediaTek Dimensity 1200, 8GB LPDDR4X RAM, 128GB UFS 3.1 storage. Now these specs are available in pretty much any 30,000 phone. And quick note, the 6GB version will only be available at the end of August. You cannot buy it as of now. Now I've heard a lot about the Dimensity 1200 and it is MediaTek's flagship chipset. You can consider it to be Snapdragon 870 equivalent. And I've been using the Reno 6 Pro as my daily driver and in day-to-day -day tasks, the Dimensity 1200 just works really well. However, one thing I noticed on the Nord 2, it seems to be throttling the CPU a bit. It's not that bad, but here's where the problem starts. This is Oppo Reno 6 Pro and it has the same Dimensity 1200 chip with no active cooling. And here's the N2 score on the Nord 2 after the recent update. It still scores less at 5,97,000, whereas the Oppo Reno 6 Pro scores 6,32,000. The CPU temperature on the benchmark is also a couple of degrees higher on the Nord 2. And one thing which everyone missed on, OnePlus recently admitted that not only OnePlus 9 and 9 Pro, it's also optimizing throttling apps like Chrome, Twitter and a bunch of 100 apps on 9R and Nord 2 as well. Now you ask what's throttling, what's app throttling? Well, listen carefully. Any mobile CPU has two types of cores. A55 or A5 cores, which is built for day-to-day -day smaller tasks like WhatsApp, Instagram scrolling, etc. 
Then you have A78 or A7 bigger cores, which are high power and are used for gaming and all other heavy tasks. Now, whenever an app demands more performance, it is pushed to the A78 or A7 cores. Now in OnePlus 9 and OnePlus 9 Pro, OnePlus was restricting 100 plus apps to run on the higher cores, which leads to really poor performance in these apps. For instance, here, this is OnePlus 60 with Snapdragon 845, quite an old phone, but with Oxygen OS 10. This is POCO X3 Pro with Snapdragon 860, which is actually Snapdragon 865. And this is Dimensity 1200. Now, when we run Speedometer 2.0, you can see all the phones score the same around 50. In fact, the POCO X3 Pro beats Nord 2. So this is a 2018 flagship. This is a 2019 flagship. This is a 2021 flagship. And I'm purposely not including Oppo Reno 6 Pro in the comparison because Color OS, Oxygen OS, same code base, it has the same problem. Now OnePlus has promised that this app optimization, throttling, will be optional in Oxygen OS 12. Well, we'll see, you will see. But having said all of these, these are just benchmarks and they don't give you the full picture. I'll speak more about this issue after testing it more in my full review. Another interesting thing is the software on the Nord 2 itself. The Nord 2 comes with Android 11 right out of the box. Well, as of now, there's no bloatware or any ads on this phone. Oxygen OS 11 comes with June security patch. Now the camera app is changed to color OS and even the settings menu is changed to color OS. If you look at the settings menu on the Nord 2 and Nord CE side by side, you can see there's personalization menu right now and it has the options to customize the always on display. But then you go back, there's ambient display as well, which should have been the part of customizations or display. Confusing, right? It's okay to use color OS settings and menu, but it should be more in line or sync with the Oxygen OS menu. Moving on, as you would have known, the camera app asks for the phone permission, which is sort of weird. Long back, I asked Realme about this and they said it's needed for video calls. But you video call through the phone app and not the camera app. So my guess is it checks for phone permission to know whether you are getting a call or not to just mute the mic. Nothing privacy invasive, but unnecessary loophole and shouldn't be required, weird. Then you have this agree to continue on the launcher. The UI is still not settled. Now the integration of color OS has also brought better things like the camera has now improved. First of all, you get a 50 megapixel Sony IMX 766 f1.8 sensor with OIS, 8 megapixel f2.25 wide angle camera, and of course, 2 megapixel monochrome sensor. On the front, this time you have a 32 megapixel selfie camera, which can only shoot selfie videos up to 1080p 30fps. Now let's quickly grab a picture of the baby Yoda or Grogu. Now, if you see side by side in the camera, the color seems to be a bit saturated, but it's okay, not that bad. Now let's quickly move out and get more camera samples. It's sort of rainy today. Talking about things that happen good with ColorOS, you get this okay mode in videos and it's almost flawless, almost, all, almost flawless. The photos turn out to be good. The white balance on the main sensor is good. Human subjects turn out to be natural, which wasn't the case with older OnePlus phones like Nord CE or OnePlus 9R. Now, there's a small problem with the camera. Whenever you take selfies in HDR mode, it just over processes the photo and you would see this weird white effects around the face. Again, I'll test it out fully after two, three camera updates and will update you in the full review. Stay subscribed for that. And the phone comes with all the important features. You get Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, good 4G plus carrier aggregation like other OnePlus phones. And also for the first time, OnePlus Nord 2 has six 5G bands. Nice. Now, unlike everyone who is upset with the merger of Oxygen OS and Color OS, I think it's fine. Oxygen OS was lacking a lot of features and the development was almost stopped. Color OS now brings really good features like gestures, always on display customization, etc., which is good for OnePlus phones. Also, now they are offering two years of Android updates and three years of security update, which is appreciated. Good one. But now, here's where the problem starts. Even Realme phones have Color OS, which is priced way less than OnePlus phone. Like Realme X7 has the same chip and was launched at 27,000 and was sold for just 25,000 during the sale. 
So why do I get a Nord 2 at 30,000, which essentially has the same OS? So now OnePlus and Realme phones both are same. Both are online brands. The only important thing to distinguish OnePlus phones is ads. The OnePlus Nord 2 doesn't have ads and that is the main selling point of Nord 2. So yes, if you need a phone without ads, then you can consider Nord 2. Well, yes, considering that there are rumors that OnePlus 9T series won't come this year. This right here automatically is the best Nord series to buy in India. The Nord CE just isn't good enough. You can consider Nord 2 and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to cover it in my full review. Or let me know what phone do you want this to be compared with. Mi 11X, Poco F3 GT. On that note, this is Pratik. I'll see you pretty soon.